JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JVD Traders Espresso with me, Dieter Sonne Charles, because today is the 4th of February 2022. So yeah, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Friday's um, recorded session uh, where we're going to have a very quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. But before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our uh, risk disclaimer. So. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, as always, a uh, quick mentioning of our JD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course our JD Bank website, and specifically our JD Research page, which is also updated on a daily basis, so check us out here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top, guys. So, now then, uh, jumping into the charts, um, oh, the, yeah, I'll get to the stock heat map in a bit, but yeah, basically looking at this picture, you can see that um, it was a bit of a roller coaster right here in the past kind of a few days um, on Nikkei here and uh, yeah we drifted lower initially we didn't really reach that uh, 27,000 mark that I was talking about kind of just fell shy by a few well not actually not a few but just a by some points um, and we then rebounded and pushed back to the upside however we we managed to close the week um, here below this downside line taken from the high of the 5th of January but above this hurdle the one that I kept on talking about this 26,955 territory so that means that well going into next week we'll be keeping close eye on this and uh, we will be waiting for a clear break either through this downside line or this uh, this hurdle right here. So, of course, uh, as you already, as you know, uh, today uh, should be uh, quite an eventful day. Um, we do have the um, U.S. NFP numbers coming out. So, yep, we'll see how the. Um, how the indices react to how the U.S. indices, how the you know, and how the cash indices on uh, of your European cash indices and the Asian cash indices will react to um, you know to all this. So so yeah, um, keep your eyes on this. Uh, this could be quite interesting. So yeah, like I said, we finished the week here um, and uh, we fin finished the week in positive territory. So that's kind of uh, good here for the buyers. We managed to kind of climb back above this lowest point of. Um, of August of last year so in a way all eyes are going to be now on uh, on the US equity world and uh, we'll see how that's going to play out if that gets if that's going to get a boost then well maybe we'll we'll see Nikkei here also opening higher uh, going into next week however if that doesn't really work out uh, if you know if the US equities drift lower then well maybe we could see Nikkei also drifting nicely to the downside going into next week but let's not over spec Let's see how that's going to play out today, and uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. Uh, the German index, DAX. So yeah, um, quite uh, quite eventful, I would say. Um, and this is one of those uh, points. Excuse me. One of those points when I say that wait for that break, and uh, um, what I said to you kind of yesterday that look at this. I mean, keep your eyes on this barrier, this fifteen thousand uh, seven hundred twenty-eight zone. I talked about that, and uh, in my morning video, I said that well, if we do pop above this area, then yes, we'll go or we'll go. We'll get a little bit more comfortable with the upside. However, if it starts falling back below this downside line, well, this is not going to look good here for the. Uh, 
uh, for the buyers and especially if we drop below this 15,537 territory, which was at that time the lowest point of February. Now the lowest point of February is somewhere around here near the um, 15,367 mark. So um, the cash index right now is showing that it had rebounded um, from somewhere around here. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, or actually even lower this, I think, yeah, it rebounded from this upside line. And uh, we're currently sitting somewhere around that 15,437 mark. So we're around 40 level. So somewhere around here, back above this 200 day EMA. However, we're stuck in, in between these two lines. So if you're looking for some upside, to be honest, at this point, I'll take a very conservative approach here in terms of the upside. I would prefer to wait for a push above this barrier right here. Um, and which um, let's maybe get ahead of my lab. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here a little bit, but which could potentially be uh, seen as a possible maybe you know ascending triangle pattern here however again that's too early to talk about that again we'll see how that's going to play out but um today but yeah at the moment i mean i would say that as long as it stays in this in between these two lines i'm going to take i'm just going to you know not do anything uh, just observe the price action but if it starts falling and breaking this upside line for example then that's where it could become a little bit more interesting for a few more sellers and then we could go for uh, some lower levels like for example this one right here the low of the 28th of January near the 15,122 or we could even end up traveling all the way to this highlighted support zone right here which I'm keeping an eye on still and uh, basically mm, oh, another thing to kind of mention here another thing to complicate your lives here a little bit um, <laughs> basically here um, what I said before that uh, maybe just maybe we could be seeing this one as a possible double top uh, pattern here with the neckline being this highlighted uh, zone right here, the one that I mentioned, uh, which is roughly around that 15,000 mark. Um, now, if by any chance this, uh, you know, pops higher uh, here, then if it travels above this hurdle, then yes, we will start looking at some upside. But um, of course, of course, maybe we could be seeing here a potential kind of range here, something like that, guys, overall on the bigger uh, on a bigger picture, because um, yeah, it does look quite uh, attractive as a as a possible uh, range here. So and that's, uh, you know, like on the bigger picture. Uh, but that's like I said, I will consider this only if we pop above this 15,728 29 zone approximately around here because this is also somewhere around that midpoint of this range as well so if we overcome the midpoint of the range then yes there is kind of a, you know a, a decent chance for it to move to the one of the sides when it when it does overcome the midpoint um so or should i say move to the opposite side so yeah so let's say in this scenario if we pop back above this hurdle yes we there is a good chance for this one to move all the way towards this um this upper side of this range potential range because again there's a lot to confirm here because um, on one hand like I said we could be seeing this as a double top on the other hand if it starts popping above some this this barrier then maybe yes then it will kind of eventually roll into a range um, on the other hand as well there's a, like the option which <laughs> kind of these with uh, the idea which supports the downside scenario is maybe if we let's say class this from just around here for example um, then maybe we could be seeing here a possible kind of uh, a head and shoulders pattern as well with the neckline being this highlighted territory this lower side this area around the 15,000 mark so there's a lot to consider guys I mean like I said if you think that this is quite straightforward not really I mean as always um, fortunately but um, the only thing we can do is try to go slowly you know on this um, try to take those levels and uh, keep an eye on those levels so like I said for me um, for the upside I need to see a push above this barrier just to be a little bit more on the safe side I do understand and I'm missing out on a bit of territory here. I mean, you could start, let's say, from the very short-term perspective, what you can do is here is keep your eyes on this downside line, for example. If we break that, then yes, we could go a little bit higher. However, we do have a bunch of obstacles on the way higher. So if you are planning to, let's say, take advantage of this move, let's say, to the upside on a break of this downside line, 
keep your eyes on well keep your eyes on these first of all on these EMAs um, and then keep your eyes on well uh, on this barrier itself I mean the breakout point for me uh, um, because maybe let's say if it travels higher but then fails to break it and then you know it could easily you know fall apart here uh, that's the point where I always say you know have your stop loss in place just in case um, this when you're trading let's say um, such such areas you know have a tight stop loss just in case it reverses you know sharply against you so and it can do so be very careful and it's Friday by the way guys so you know don't over trade I mean Friday sometimes tends to be a quite a one-way traffic uh, mode day and uh, yeah um, it's you know it doesn't really always lead to something good um, and then like I said just keep your you know stop loss in place and the fact that we have some you know some uh, news coming out from the US uh, and I'll get to the one of the US indices right now so Dow Jones Industrial Average there we go beautiful hold up from on near this downside line here I talked about this and boom yeah we didn't get that push above this 35,662 territory I spoke about that and talked about that level and said that we need that break above that area in order to go for higher levels we didn't get that instead we had a drop back down um, again I'm not saying that this is suddenly you know we're becoming very very bearish or something like that no because the cash index for example rebounded somewhat uh, we are kind of uh, trading at around 35,300 five six something like that area um, so that means that we are kind of back here somewhere around here somewhere near near this 100 day EMA so um, that's kind of good signs for the for the buyers um, if we do break this downside line and then pop above this uh, 35,662 territory I'll aim for higher levels at the moment I'm just observing this one also just due to the fact that we have a quite an interesting day today if it falls somewhere below this 34,815 zone right here then yeah uh, we could maybe mm, we could maybe consider a bit of a, a move lower I mean if you, you can also keep your eyes on that um, kind of psychological 35,000 mark as well somewhere roughly around here um, if that gets broken yes I mean we could start looking looking at some lower levels but to be honest I would prefer maybe to drop to see a drop below the 34,815 zone first and then go for um, for some lower levels um, NASDAQ 100 and in general yesterday in terms of the market I mean yesterday the market kind of uh, the US uh, market didn't perform quite well um, the worst performing sector was communication ser services and let me just jump into this um, so communication services were not really yet on the um, on their peak um, we did um, um, we did kind of uh, also you know the techno technology was this the second and, and the second least performer and just look at Facebook I mean that is just insane guys I mean yesterday's drop I mean it, it, not to mention that it, you know what it did after hours but there we go I mean it's yeah it, it was insane and here and on on meta platforms Facebook so yeah we'll see how it's gonna play out of course today maybe we could see a bit of a rebound maybe you know the n good number could uh, from the US could kind of push the market a little bit higher however still the all the concerns you know around the uh, interest rates uh, geopolitical tensions yeah all that is not really kind of you know uh, spreading the joy in the financial world um, so the only thing we can do guys is well have our stop losses in place and kind of you know carefully um, carefully calculate our exposure in the market so you know that's kind of one of the most important things risk management guys I mean you you know it better better than me um, so yeah uh, don't over trade never you know over trade just kind of you know do everything and especially in times like these uncertain times like these I mean I understand that the majority of the time is uncertain but right now we're kind of a little bit in, in more uncertainty than before so so yeah uh, and the market is quite like I said an interesting spot right now so Nasdaq yesterday just kind of fell off the cliff um, thank you thank you very much meta platforms <clears throat> um, so yeah uh, it drifted lower it uh, moved uh, closer to this 14,385 zone I talked about that level uh, that's the area for me for let's say starting to consider the downside um, but 
if you can take a look at the cash index right now, you'll see that we are trading currently at around 14,815 zone. Basically, we're near this downside line. So it seems that, yeah, the um, the bulls are not trying to give up here. So we'll have, uh, if you managed on the cash index, guys, I mean, this was something that's difficult to do, but if you somehow managed to capture this, um, this move, you know, to back to the upside here. Uh, well, congratulations. Uh, now, of course, we'll wait for uh, the market opening. Um, if we do break this downside line, then um, we'll go for some higher levels. Of course, we'll go. We'll go back to this area, this 15,165 zone. But as I mentioned before, I'll stick to the same game plan. I would rather wait for a push above this barrier right here, this 15,357 territory, in order to get comfortable with higher levels. I do get it. Uh, I'm missing out on a lot of territory here. Um, if you're looking for something short term, I would say if we pop back above this 200 day EMA, this could start, yes, increasing the chances for a push higher. But as I said, uh, with one of the in, uh, previous indices, we do have a bunch of obstacles as well here. So if you are taking, uh, let's say, a risk somewhere around here, Keep in mind that we do have a bunch of obstacles to overcome. So if, if you know if, if it struggles to do that, then well, um, yeah, it, you know it might sh reverse quickly. Um, this is the point where let's say you know you're if you do let's say take something like a, like a risk somewhere around here, guys, um, on a breakout, um, then yes, have your stop losses in place. Uh, also, do not forget, for example, that sometimes on a break, you know, it doesn't really, you know, go straight away higher, it might come back, it might, you know, take a lot of traders out, um, because if, let's say, if you do have your stop loss very tight right here somewhere, um, then, yeah, it might, you know, drift back down, quickly take you out, and then, you know, push to the upside again. So we've seen these scenarios happening. Um, that's why, you know, you know, you sometimes need to kind of settle. Let's say if you saw this breaking, uh, let it settle a little bit. Let's see, you know, see what the, you know, what, what traders want to do further. And then if you, yeah, if you can see that, you know, that's, it's kind of trading nicely above this downside line, then yes, of course it increases the chances for a further move higher. The only thing is that, well, it's the market that we're dealing with. So always have your stop loss guys. I mean, if you are in profit, for example, in this situation, then I would, you know, always recommend to kind of, you know, put your stop losses break even at least so that, you know, in case this suddenly like, you know, goes down the toilet kind of. So, um, yeah, it, it doesn't really kind of, you know, take you out as well with that. Um, DXY dollar index very quickly on that. So beautiful drop here and, uh, yeah, boom. Okay. I would say one thing that, um, the, uh, the idea that I talked about, I said that if we drop below this 96.67 territory, I said that, yes, we'll start aiming lower initially. I'll aim for that 21 day EMA. Um, if that fails to provide support, then yes, the next target is this upside support line, which is taken from the low of the uh, 25th of May of 2021. So we managed to reach that, but also we managed to overcome that. So, and in general, um, I think that a bit of um, a readjustment uh, here has to be made. So First thing, I think that this upside line no longer needed and no longer valid. We kind of reached, we kind of you know, used it. it, we managed to reach that, it did drift, you know, lower. Um, let's say, uh, because at the moment, I would say, you know, it could look that, oh, you know, it's going to drift further south. Yes, it could do, still, that, don't get me wrong, but I would probably not focus on this upside line anymore. And uh, I want to keep an eye on something else here, because... Uh, this is something a little bit more short term and tentative. So there we go. This upside line right now. They, uh, again, I get it. It's very tentative. It's kind of, you know, trying to find something, you know, something where there is nothing. Um, but um, let's see if this is going to play out because it's very close to this uh, 100 day EMA. As you can see last time, for example, here, the 100 day EMA did provide support. We did get a few uh, overshoots here um, and then it reversed. So that's why I'm saying that maybe the same scenario could you know get repeated as well because we could see a drop below this 100 day EMA although it's a good area of support right now if we drop below this we might test this area somewhere here somewhere near this 95 zone excuse me somewhere near this 95 zone and maybe the uh, this is where the upside line could play out nicely and could maybe you know provide that support um, however if we do continue to slide now this is this could be a good indication that you know the upside line got broken and now it's kind of opening the door you know towards further decline so yep uh, 
that's why I'm gonna, like I said, I'm, that's why I'm gonna keep this upside line for now. Um, we want to see. I want to see how it's gonna play out. But again, at this point, looking at all this, it's not really looking very positive here. Um, however, we do have a special day today. Um, in the U.S. Uh, labor market, kind of. So yeah. Uh, let's see how that's going to play out today and what impact it's going to have. Uh, from But from the technical side, if you're looking for some further declines, guys, uh, wait for at least for a drop below this 100 EMA and then ca carefully monitor this upside line. Jumping into gold, mm, the weaker dollar, of course, uh, working positively with uh, gold buyers here. So, yep, um, at the moment, uh, everything's looking quite interesting for the buyers. However, however, I don't really like such scenarios when it's just kind of, you know, continues to oscillate around one level, let's say your breakout level. And that means that, you know, this 1805 area 06, it doesn't really you know, it doesn't really work anymore. And uh, we need to find a new level for ourselves here. And probably I would stick to the current highest point of this week near the uh, 8.10, 11 zone, something like that. That's what we have reached this week. So at the same time, it coincides with the 21 day EMA. And if we pop above that, then well, maybe there's more, you know, more buying interest could come in, um, because we would then be a, a, a placed above all of the EMAs here on our daily chart and then you know so on and so on but if it continues to trade somewhere around here to be honest I'm just gonna you know observe the price action here and just gonna new not do anything uh, quickly on WTI oil boom there we go guys beautiful beautiful rebound here um, and this is what I say I keep saying that you know wait for that kind of level wait for that area I said to you yesterday that um, even though you know if it, if it drifts lower this all this area for me is somewhat of a neutral one um, I need this one to get back above this upside uh, this uh, upper side of the rising channel in order to uh, let's say go for some higher levels well I mean we got that and now and uh, we managed to also reach that uh, where's that 90 90.46 90 zone so we managed to overcome that 90 dollar mark um f this has been the first time since and this is where i need to scroll back all the way here into history guys i mean that was just uh yeah since uh what since there we go stop 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 um since 2014 guys we have not been above 90 bucks for since 2014 the what um around mid mid september uh that's when or actually no when we were uh no the beginning of october we were still kind of around 90 bucks and then in 2014 and then yep that's it since then uh we have not been you know near that level so for eight years just um and uh, yeah we right now we're back above we're back above this hurdle Let's see if this is going to stay for this week because I'm keeping a close eye on the weekly candles uh, because, yeah, I mean, if we if we do stay above that 90 mark, well, I guys, I mean, I, was, I don't want to say this. I mean, if probably if you're, you know, for all the motorists here, it's not going to look good because, you know, this is going to get a little bit more expensive, uh, the petrol stations. Um, but uh, yeah, if this is, if this is going to stay above this area somewhere, then above this 90 bucks, then Oh, um, there is a very good likelihood that we might go all the way towards the 100. However, let's not over speculate. We still have a full day to tr of trading today. Um, you know, at the moment, yes, everything is looking quite positive, and I'll continue aiming higher. But um, like I said, at the moment, I'm just observing this one. I mean, I'm kind of cautious. I'm cautiously bullish because uh, we did not really have like a, a stronger correction yet, but um, Still, the upside momentum is the more likely uh, is is as is currently prevailing. So um, that's why it, at the moment I would say I'll, I'll aim for some higher levels. Although some of you might think that we're maybe over um, overbought already here, but you know it didn't really the uh, let's say the RSI here did not curve yet. It's still pointing higher. So I mean this could easily go further north. Ethereum very quickly on this one. Um, so yeah, Ethereum pushing nicely, rebounding nicely from the subside line. I talked about this yesterday, if you remember. I said that, um, well, we're keeping a close eye on the subside line, taken from the low the 24th of January. Um, let's see if it, you know, if the, if the crypto rebounds from it. Um, still, nevertheless, I mean, I need to see a break of this downside line in order to go for some higher levels. For the downside, I need to see a break of this upside line in order to go for lower levels. Very straightforward. Um, 
AUD JPY. Very, I haven't looked at this one for quite a while, and uh, well, uh, we are near this uh, nice short-term downside resistance line taken from the high of the 5th of January. Can we overcome it? Now, as we as we know, AUD JPY tends to be quite a good. Um, kind of a risk on risk off monitor uh, indicator um, in the market. So if we do pop higher here, I mean, if sorry, if equities do go higher, then uh, we could see um, AUD JPY pushing nicely to the upside. Um, not this level. This is not the level I'm going to keep an eye on. I'm going to keep an eye on the current highest point of, of this week near the 82.28. Uh, um, if we clear that, then yes, I'll go for higher levels. My next target will be uh, somewhere around here near the 89. Uh, sorry, 82.97, and then so on and so on. We do have these other obstacles right here, but um, for now, I'm keeping a close eye on this downside line, and I uh, want to see if it actually, you know, uh, gets broken or not. Um, in terms of the downside, I would like to see a drop somewhere below this 81.38, 39 zone, and then, yeah, we could go for some lower levels. Um, USDJPY, very quickly on this one, uh, rebounded nicely, so uh, quite interesting to see here, a rebound. Uh, but to be honest, it's at the moment, it's just starting to oscillate around that 21-day EMA, so that doesn't really work well for us here. Um, I would rather maybe now at this point, I mean, I previously talked about this 115.07, but looking at this picture, I would rather wait for a break, at least a break of this downside line taken from the high of the 4th of January. January. Um, US dollar against the Russian ruble. I talked about this one. Um, like I said, these I, like, I do like to look at these uh, exotic pairs. I'll take a look at the US dollar against the Turkish lira as well right now. But um, yeah, these tend to sometimes present very good, um, you know, trading options, trading ideas. Um, now, what I what I was talking about previously here, I was saying that you know we're currently sitting in this rising channel pattern, which uh, yeah, of course, could lead you know to some higher levels here. But um, the way everything's shaping up right now here. Uh, especially on the technical side, um, if the, uh, that we could see a, a rebound from the lower side of the of uh, this uh, channel, yes, that that could be the case. We could see a pop higher. However, I'm going to keep an eye on this hurdle right here, the 77.30 zone, 33, sorry, um, because um, approximately around there. I'm not going to. It's not a specific level, but just approximately around there, guys. It's always approximate. Um, because if it holds somewhere around here and then let's say it reverses back down, then, well, as you probably already noted, uh, we could have ourselves a nice little head and shoulders pattern uh, with the neckline potentially being somewhere around here in this little zone here, uh, roughly between the, you know, 70, 75.60. Uh, let's round it up here. Oh, or let's not round it up, but take an average roughly around there. So uh, around here, the 75.60, could be that uh, area of neckline, potential neckline. Um, but like I said, for this, uh, again, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here. Mm, if we do rebound from this lower side of the uh, the rising channel, but we struggle, let's say, to overcome this barrier, then we might see, like I said, a move back down. And this is where, uh, like, you know, this is where it could become a little bit more interesting. So this is what I'm going to highlight it, highlight for now. And uh, yeah, then uh, we will take it from there, guys. So uh, this is what, like I said, this is what I'm going to keep an eye on. And of course, I'm keeping an eye on this barrier as well. Uh, US dollar against the Turkish lira. Um, so previously, I drawn this, I have drawn this uh, kind of squeeze here. We did get out of the squeeze, but you know, it's still kind of oscillating around that 21 day EMA. So comparing to the, you know, these moves that we had here uh, in the end, you know, in the end of the year of last year, um, now I would say I'm just going to stick to the range. Um, I'm stick, going to stick to these levels. I'm going to keep an eye on those and I will need to see a clear break through one of those. Uh, so uh, in order to consider the next short term directional move. So the on the upside 13 0.93, something like that, and on downside, 13.14, something like that, approximately around there, on the downside, yeah. Um, GBPCHF, guys, very quickly on this one, uh, 
we had a good push higher yesterday. It's kind of drifting nicely here quietly to the upside. Um, still aiming uh, higher as long as it stays above all of the EMAs. If it starts falling or, let's say, trading somewhere around these EMAs, I'm just going to take a neutral stand on this one. Um, but for the downside, let's say if it starts falling somewhere below this 1.2417 level right here, then yes, I'll consider maybe a bit of a, a move lower. Again, we can also say that we might be seeing this one kind of, uh, you know, coiling up up here a little bit um, well we'll just wait and see of course for if, if that's gonna be the case or not but at the moment I'm leaning a little bit like I said more towards the upside as long as it stays above all of the um, all of the EMAs right here guys so yeah and then we'll aim for that uh, downside uh, downside resistance line which is taken from the high here uh, of the 5th of April of 20. 21. Um, Euro JPY, you no, know, look at this one. Boom. The yesterday, of course, as I told you guys, keep your eyes on the um, the ECB and uh, yep, and especially the press conference. And uh, this is what I was pointing out yesterday uh, in my video. And well, I mean, you probably understand. If you were trading Euro dollar, then you probably understand that uh, Euro dollar and Euro and in general Euro pairs. And for example, this one right here, Euro JPY. Look at the beautiful explosion we had here. Nice move here to the upside I talked about this barrier this 129.65 level guys I mean I kept on mentioning this I said that if we pop above this then yes we'll go for some higher levels and look at this I mean I didn't expect that it's gonna straight away break this downside line but well, we'll take that to be honest. Okay, um, we broke the downside line and we also broke the highest point of January so yeah, that's great. I mean, it wasn't yesterday, it was today already, but still, that's a good result here. 131.60 got uh, level got broken. The next target for me right now, if the pair continues to trade above this 131.60 level, of course, is this one right here. The high of the 4th of November, or in other words, the highest point of November, near the 132.56 mark. And then we'll take it from there. Of course, um, it, this pair will, of course, depend on the equity world as well. If equities rebound, then, well, we could see, you know, uh, yen getting sell sold against the euro here, for example, and we could see a further move higher. So, yeah, let's keep an eye on this. Let's see how all this is going to play out. But for now, for now, everything's, yeah, uh, looking quite interesting. Um, in, ca in case this suddenly falls back below this downside line, guys, well, that's where I'm going to maybe consider a bit of a move, uh, a retracement back down. And finally, euro USD. So, um, Euro USD, um, beautiful, beautiful move here. Yesterday, we were sitting around here just kind of balancing. And, uh, you know, during the interest rate decision, we were still kind of sitting here. Even actually, we were declining a little bit. But then, uh, you know, the president of the ACB came out, Christine Lagarde. Um, and, uh, yep, we, you know, uh, all the questions started. And there we go. I mean, there we had a beautiful explosion here to the upside. We cleared this one. 1.1330. I said I talked about this level as well yesterday, guys. I said that if we pop above this, then this is, could increase. You know, this will confirm a forthcoming higher high and could increase uh, the chances for a further move north. Um, we did reach that 108 EMA, so that's great. Um, and we are now kind of aiming for that highest point of January near the 1.1483. Um, it's going to be quite interesting to see if we can clear this. If we can. My next uh, target is the uh, 1.15, 24, 25, uh, 30 zone right here, approximately around here. But if that gets cleared, then of course, yes, keeping an eye on this um, this 200 day EMA, which is roughly around that 15, 1.15, 70 zone, approximately around there, guys. Um, or actually, yep, yeah, 71, something like that, 72. And then, yeah, we'll take it from there, guys. But for now, for now, uh, we did have a good move here. Um, if you're not really comfortable around here, I would say leave it. If you're not comfortable with something, guys, just don't trade it. Uh, you know, be kind of cautious. R rather wait for that better, you know, uh, opportunity, and then yet yeah, take a position. If but if you, if you still let's say if something is not really you know ticking all your boxes, then they just kind of don't you know it, it's gonna you know, it's gonna mess up everything, guys. Um, that's what I kind of try to do. I mean, I sometimes, you know, you sometimes you you you're then you're worried that or you're missing out on a, on an opportunity or something like that. Especially when you see that it's gonna oh it went your way. But hey, guys, we rather stay safe than sorry. So and most importantly, have your stop loss in place. So 
long story short, right now, on your dollar, guys, keep your eyes on today's news. Uh, keep your eyes on the NFPs today. So that's going to be quite interesting to see how all this is going to play out. But, uh, yeah, I'm keeping a close eye on this 1.1483 level. If we clear this, then I'll aim for that 1.152530 zone. So, guys, that's it for this session and for this week. I really appreciate you being with me, guys, this week. You're watching my videos. I mean, really, really, you know, thank you for my massive thank you for that. I really appreciate that. Um, again, I'll come back to the same idea, the same point which I've mentioned in the beginning of the video. Guys, be, today's Friday. Don't overtrade. Um, you know, if, if something's not working out, just leave it for Monday. You'll you'll definitely see that there will be opportunities next week. However, you know, if you if you did, like I said, if you did make some trades and especially profitable, congratulations. But you know, like I said, don't overtrade and have your stop loss in place. Um, so yeah, I'll I'll see you next week. Uh, hopefully, yes, is going to be live now. Um, next week I should be live. So seven o'clock GMT time, guys. For now, for now. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.